Do you love pre-cut fabrics? If you love pre-cut fabrics as much as I do, this pattern will be perfect for you because you can use it with charm packs, jelly rolls, or even layer cakes. Hi, my name is Fallon and I love to quilt. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the perfect pattern to use for those pre-cut fabrics you may have hiding out in your stash. I'm gonna show you a charm pack version of this pattern as well as a jelly roll version of this pattern, but you can of course also make this pattern with layer cakes. What pre-cut fabric do you find yourself buying the most? I think for me, it seems to be charm packs. I absolutely love charm packs. You get all these little perfect pieces of fabric in all of the different prints from a particular line of fabric and they are so cost friendly right now especially with the price of fabric going up so come along with me let's use up some of those pre-cuts that might be hanging out in your stash so i made some sample blocks of the blocks that i'm going to be showing you how to make for this pattern and the first block is just a simple sawtooth star block I did a four patch in the center of it and it is so cute. Just a cute little simple block. Um, I love the Sawtooth Star block. And then the other block is a kind of square and a square block. The square in the center is a four patch as well. So both of these blocks here come together pretty quickly. They're a lot of fun to make and I'll give you the cuts you need for just one block so you'll find all that cutting information down in the description of this video. So for the charm pack version of this quilt, I'm actually going to be using a charm pack of batik fabrics and they are all purples in different shades. Absolutely gorgeous fabric. Now the background on this quilt is going to be this beautiful batik yellow. Um, these fabrics are just really going to pop together. I'm really excited to see how this one comes together. And now for the jelly roll version of this quilt pattern, I'm going to be using this Moda jelly roll. It's by Bonnie and Camille, and it is um, the Shine On fabric line. So it's a beautiful, beautiful jelly roll. And then for the background fabric, I'm actually going to use two different background fabrics. So I have a cream here, and then this cream kind of has some texture to it, some swirls in it and it kind of looks even a little bit shiny. Um, when you first glance at them together, they're very, very similar looking, so I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I think it's gonna add a little bit of extra dimension to this quilt and a little more interest in texture because the background fabric on one of them has a bit of texture to it. Now, the solid cream I'm going to use on the background of the stars because they are going to be a little bit more of a busy block within this quilt because we'll have the star points and the four patch in the center. And then I'm going to use this more textured tone on tone background fabric, the back of the square in the square block. It's going to be the background fabric there. Uh, since that one only has the four patch to make up the center square, I figured that would be a nice place to add a little more fun and texture. So the simple thing here with cutting is that all of the printed fabrics, so the jelly roll and the charm packs are going to be cut into 2.5 inch squares. But I'm gonna go ahead and get all of the background fabric cut, but I'm going to cut the charm packs and the jelly rolls as I need them because I'm going to want each of my blocks to look very specific and I'll explain that when I get there. But I will have all of the information for the jelly rolls and the charms in the description as well. All right, so I have all of the background fabric cut for both the jelly roll and the charm pack version of this quilt pattern. Now the charm pack version I'm doing in the batik fabrics, if you remember. Now all I need to prep is the charms. Now like I said before, I'm gonna do these one at a time for each block, but since I have them on the design boards here, I could always get a bunch of them cut at once and lay them out so that they still look the way I want, but 
Uh, for now, I'm going to show you each block one at a time. We're going to start with the square and the square block because I personally think that is the easiest one to put together. Okay, so for one square and a square block, we'll need four of the triangles and these are five inch squares and then they're cut on the diagonal ones. Now from my charm pack, I'm going to choose two of the squares that have some nice contrast between each other. So maybe a lighter and a darker or a medium and a light, a medium and a dark, however you want to go, just two that will give you some nice contrast between the two. So I'm going to take the um, top fabric here, the darker one, and this fabric here. And then all we're going to do is cut these down into two and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna put those to the side, line it up on the mat here. Now, if you want to, you could use a ruler instead of your mat to measure it out, um, however you wanna do it. I'm just gonna use the mat here. So I'm gonna cut it in half. And then cut them in half again. And I'm gonna do that with both of them. So this one as well. Now these were folded over because they were showing all the different, like a couple of the different prints here. Uh, so I will need to press that out, but for now I'm just going to cut it really quick. And so what we're going to be doing is sewing a four patch. So this is how the block will come together. But all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take the two contrasting squares, place them right sides together. Now I'm gonna say right side, um, but they are batik, so both sides kind of look the same to me. So I'm gonna sew two sets of them together. All right, and then I'm going to press the seams toward the darker fabric. And so when I do that, when I bring these together so that they kind of form that checkerboard look to them, the seams nest together really nicely so I can feel exactly where they meet so that I get some nice points there. All right, so I'm gonna press that seam again. Press all the seams that you sew. <laughs> all right, so now it's laying nice and flat. And so then we're just gonna put on these um, background squares, these corner triangles. And I'm gonna sew them on to opposing sides the first time um, through. So I'm gonna fold the triangle in half along that longer side there. So I'm gonna fold it in half and find the middle of that. And then I'm going to place that down on the seam here on the four patch. All right, sew it across there. And then I'm going to take another one and put it on the opposite side. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna fold it in half and this four patch here makes it really nice for lining these triangles up nice and easy. So I'm putting it along that other side so that fold that I created on the longer edge of this triangle is lined up with the seam of the four patch. All right, and so now I'm gonna press the seams on these triangles and they are going to be a stretchy bias seam. So I'm gonna finger press it nice and gently and then add heat. I feel like if I finger press it first, I kind of get that, that fold going right along the seam and I don't seem to get as much stretch. So I find it really helpful to go ahead and finger press them. All right, so then I'm gonna move on to the next two sides that don't have the triangles already on them. And just gonna use those same methods where I kind of finger press a fold there, line that fold up with the seam, and then sew on the opposite side. 
Now you don't have to sew kind of two on at a time and then press them. You could sew one on, on, one on at a time if you wanted to. Um, but you will want to do either one at a time or opposite sides at a time just so you can get those seams pressed flat. All right, and again, so I'm gonna finger press these. All right, and then it's looking really great. The purple and the yellow look so good together. All right, so let me show you how to trim this down into a 6.5 inch square. All right, so now we need to trim this block down to a 6.5 inch square. So I'm gonna take the trim lock here and I'm gonna line up these diagonal lines with the four patch lines. That'll help me get this nice and straight and even. And then we'll just trim. So I cut one side at a time, turn, cut the next, turn, next, turn, and then I'm gonna cut this last side here, and there we go, we have a perfect 6.5 inch square for this block. And so as you create this block, you could definitely use scraps as well. You don't have to have two of the same prints in here. You could have four completely different plants. It's completely up to you on how you wanna bring this block together. Okay, so now that you know how to make the square and the square block, before we move on to the sawtooth star block, I want to just quickly show you how you would do this with the jelly roll. So you have all of your corner triangles and these are also five inch squares that are cut in half along the diagonal. And then with the jelly roll, <laughs> she just love unwrapping a jelly roll. All you'll do is look through it and find two contrasting prints that you really like together as well. So, ooh, this one just caught my eye right away. And then I would just look through and find a print that I would really like to put with it. I think this would kind of add a lot of fun color with it. There's a little bit of green already in there, so I think those two will look really nice together. All right, so I think these two prints would look really nice together. We already have some green in with these florals, and then the green here will add some nice texture along with it. And I think having a different print along with the florals will be really fun too. Now, something that can bother some people with these pre-cuts is how uneven this strip is cut. It really kind of, when you look at the whole thing, kind of really stands out that it's not cut along with the pattern. So the nice thing about doing this pattern is that since the pieces are kind of smaller, uh, you can avoid having how off the strip is kind of cut from the prints hidden within the pattern. So all I'm gonna do, since these are just already folded on their own, that's how it is kind of presented in the jelly roll. Uh, I'm just gonna line them up on some lines, trim up one edge, and then cut a cross here two and a half inches. So one, two and a half. And then I'll have two of each print. So again, I would just sew these together into a four patch and then sew them, them those corner triangles on here just as before. So it's really just the exact same pattern, just the way you would cut the two and a half inch squares from the charm pack or from the jelly roll or from the, um, the layer cake will just be a little bit different. So here are all the fabrics that you will need for the Sawtooth Star Block. So you're going to need two kind of lighter 2.5 inch squares and two kind of medium uh, tone 2.5 inch squares and these will create up the four patch on the Sawtooth Star. Then you'll need some background fabric. We have four two inch squares for the corners. So four two and a half inch by um, 
four inch rectangles. These are going to be part of the star points. And then you'll need four two and a half inch squares for the star points. And I'm using the same fabric for these. So I used two charms to cut all eight of these um, two and a half inch squares. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is sew that four patch together just as we did before. So contrasting 2.5 inch squares together. Sew that quarter inch seam. Press toward the darker fabric. Now that your seams can nest together nicely, so the seams are folded in opposite directions, sew that final quarter inch seam on the four patch. Now if you're making the square in the square block, this four patch would be finished, but here the four patch is a little bit too large. So we are going to cut this down to three and a half inches. So to do that, um, you could use any standard ruler you have to cut it down to three and a half inches. I'm gonna use a 3.5 inch trim lock. And to use it, I am going to need some lines on this four patch to help me along the way. So I'm gonna fold it along the diagonal and press it. And I'm going to do that in both directions. So you can see I have the seam um, the folded like line there to follow. Now I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. And so now you can see I have folds going in opposite directions there. And the folds are right along the diagonal. So I'm going to take my, so it's three and a half inch. So I'm going to take my three and a half inch trim lock. The handle you can see kind of just automatically has that center, um, where the handle is, but these diagonal lines, I can line up on those folds that I had so that I know that this is centered perfectly. And then I'll just cut around it just like I did with the six and a half inch. Cut off one side, turn, cut off. And this way I can just trim it up really, really quick and easy. All right, so now that the cute little four patch is trimmed down, we'll move on to the flying geese. So to make the flying geese, we are going to take one of the two and a half inch by um, four inch rectangles and one of the eight two and a half inch squares. So I'm keeping all of my star points the same fabric, but if you're making this really, really scrappy, you can use a variety of fabrics here. So I'm going to place these right sides together on one side of the rectangle. I'm going to line it up and then I'm going to sew um, corner to corner across the, um, the square. So if you want to mark corner to corner on these squares, definitely do that. I'm just gonna eyeball it because these are going to be a lot bigger than they need to be, and I'm just trimming them down later. So you can do these one at a time, or you could kind of chain piece all four of them that you need for one of the stars. So if you have diagonal seam tape, that works really well here. I Since this is a smaller, um, smaller one, I'm just eyeballing it. All right, so I'm gonna cut these threads apart. And now what I need to do is trim away a quarter inch from that row of stitches we did. So I'm just trimming off there. I'm using the quarter inch marking on the flying geese trim lock that I have. So I'm just lining up that etched line on the, the flying grease piece trim lock so that I can trim away a quarter of an inch. And then what I'm going to do here is press the seam over. 
Okay, so I'm gonna finger press it first and then add heat. All right, so now that these are pressed nice and flat, we can add on the triangle to the other side. So to do that, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take the square, put it in the corner, and sew across the diagonal. If you need to mark it, mark it. And you'll do that for all four of them. All right, once you get them all sewn, cut them apart if you're chain piecing them. And then again, we're going to trim them, trim them a quarter inch away from that line of stitches. So I just finger press first and then add some heat. Seriously, I'm really loving how this purple and yellow look together. All right, and so then we're going to trim these cute little flying geese down to three and a half inch by two inch flying geese blocks. So I'm using that same trim lock I was showing you before to trim off a quarter inch away from the line of stitches. And that just gets you like the perfect little flying geese, so quick and easy to make. Now, you can use whatever method you like to sew your flying geese to get them to two inch by three and a half inch flying geese. There are so many different methods out there. Um, this is just how I do it. <laughs> So to lay out this block, I'm going to put the star points around the four patch. And then those two inch background squares are going to go in the corner and look at this beautiful star come together. It's not even sewn yet. And I love it. <laughs> it's so pretty. Oh my goodness. This is going to pop and be such a cheerful quilt. Okay. So I'm going to put this as far over as I can here. And we're just going to sew the first two blocks in each row together. I'm just going to net them together. And I'll show you what that means. It just means I'm not going to cut the threads as I sew each row. So I'm going to take the next two, sew them together. And I didn't cut the thread there. All right, and then I'm going to press the first row, I'm gonna press the fabric toward that little um, two inch corner block. And then here in the second row, I'm gonna press the seam over toward the center four patch. And then the bottom, I'm going to press it over toward that little two inch square again. And then we're just gonna start sewing on this final row. So I'm gonna place this right sides together over here. So a quarter inch seam. Second one here, I'm gonna put it right sides together, making sure I have it lined up properly for making these star points. Then I think I ran out of sabobin. <laughs> All right, and so here we're going to press the seams toward the small corner square and toward the four patch. And then out toward the corner square. And I'm gonna press all this really well and then sew the rows together. I just love sewing these like this and it all just keeping together so that it keeps everything straight for me, love it. And because of how I pressed each of the seams, these just all nest together and it reduces um, the bulk in the block by having these seams pressed in opposite directions here. So I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam across this row here. All right, and so I'm gonna press the seams 
And there is the Sawtooth Star block with the four patch center. And now you know how to make both of the blocks for this quilt. So I'm gonna get a bunch of them sewn up from the Jelly Roll and from the Batik fabric, the Charm Pack fabric. And we'll take a look at how we're going to lay these out. It's really simple. We're just gonna alternate the two blocks. Um, but I wanna show you some of them so you can let me know which colorway is standing out to you more. All right, so I have two quilts here to show you with this pattern. We're gonna take a closer look at both of them, but we're first going to start with this one. This is the Jelly Roll version because I am obsessed with this scrappy striped binding. All right, so let me put it up on my wall here so we can take a closer look at it. Okay, so if you want to make the Jelly Roll version of this quilt and want to use the full Jelly Roll, you can make 40 of the star blocks and 40 of the square and the square blocks with a jelly roll. That's if you use all of these strips. Now in the jelly roll that I purchased, there was a lot of really light colored jelly rolls and there was all these stripes. And I decided I wanted to use those striped fabric for the binding on this because I thought it would look absolutely amazing. And it does. I love how it turned out. Now I put a thin border of my background fabric around it just so the um, binding could really, really pop. And I absolutely love how it turned out. Now if you make this quilt using the full jelly roll and you make 40 of the star blocks and 40 of the square and a square blocks, your quilt will come out to about 48 by 60 inches. So just keep that in mind. Mine is a little smaller because I didn't make as many blocks as I could have. Now, if you two like the look of this striped scrappy binding, I will go ahead and show you how I put this binding together to get all those stripes to line up. So I have some of these beautiful striped jelly roll strips from my bundle of fabric and I'm putting together a gorgeous scrappy binding for this quilt. So I want to show you how I am bringing these together and trying to line up the, stri the stripes pretty nicely. So first I want to lay out the binding strip that I've been adding all of the uh, fabrics too and then I have the piece that I'm going to add on. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold the strip so that's on the diagonal. You can throw it, you can fold it past a little bit, that is fine. So I'm going to fold it and then I'm going to press it. Just make sure it's nice and even. Alright and so then I can move it across here and find a way to line it up nicely. So those stripes are lining up pretty well. And then I'm just going to add some glue across there. First I'm gonna pin it though so that it stays in place. So I'm just using some acorn precision piecing glue. Make sure it's still lined up the way you like it. I'm gonna press again to make sure the glue's drying and holding nicely. And now that it's holding, it's holding pretty well. I, there's a few places that I missed, but it's holding pretty well. I'm gonna take out the pin and then fold down. And then I'm gonna stitch right along that diagonal line. And I can see it really well from pressing. So I'm gonna stitch right across there. All right, so there's my line of stitches, and then it's very important, I like to check and make sure that I like how it's lined up before I cut anything. So you can see it's off slightly at some of them, just a tiny bit, but I don't think it's gonna be enough where it'll bother me or it'll be noticed. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this up. So I'm just gonna cut about a quarter inch away. It doesn't matter if it's completely even or not. I'm gonna cut off the little ears that'll form there. And then because we use the glue, I may not be able to get this open, so I may have to press the side. I've got some of them open, but I did put a little more glue on this one than I meant to. So I'm just going to press it to the side. I'm not going to keep messing with it. I do prefer to press those open um, just so to reduce bulk, but 
it's not worth it to me to keep messing with that. All right, so all I need to do now is keep adding on enough of these strips to go around the quilt. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna press the binding in half so that the uh, right side of the fabric is facing out on both sides and raw edges are meeting and then I'll sew it onto my quilt. So that is how I'm doing the scrappy um, striped binding. All right, so that binding wasn't as hard as it kind of looked was it it comes together pretty easily just takes a little extra time to line everything up but it is so worth it it looks really really good on the quilt all right and so here we have the charm pack version of this quilt all right and remember i used two charm packs here and then the background fabric of course the background fabric there as well all the details will be in the description of the video for that now for this charm pack version, you'll be able to make 21 of the square and square blocks and 21 of the um, star blocks. And this quilt will come out to about 36 inches by 42 inches, a nice crib size quilt. And of course you could use more charm packs and make an even larger quilt, add, add a border on if you want to. There are so many options with this simple pattern with just two blocks and some pre-cuts. So I hope you enjoyed this simple pattern and I would love to know if you end up making it. If you do, you could share photos of your quilt in my Facebook group and that is linked down in the description of this video as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.